I think 2019, we're going to see education really used as more of a strategic asset in healthcare, and that we've got a couple things happening. We have a lot of consolidation that's been happening in the industry, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down, which is creating this really interesting scale problem where you know now you're looking at an average healthcare system that's got 14 hospitals, potentially 100 or more clinics. Do so you really have to be able to get education out to and not just you know traditional read this learn this but really teaching people how to do things and getting hands on which creates a very different scale problem and if we don't deal with that scale problem correctly it's going to become very expensive for hospitals so really learning how to use education as a strategic tool to one improve the quality of care delivery but also do that in minimizing the cost burden of having to educate at, you know, against learner populations denominated in tens of thousands is going to be really important. The next piece is really starting to understand how do you use technology to potentially gain competitive advantage. So we're in a really competitive healthcare market where you know, we have relatively high nurse turnover, you know, we start to see health systems competing against one another. Um, and we know that when you actually invest in education and professional development of an individual, it leads to loyalty to, towards an employer. And how can you use education and the investments you're making in somebody's education as a competitive differentiator to retain staff and also increase quality of care, which has a lot of benefits overall. And I think we're going to see people taking a much more strategic view of education to you know really accomplish some of the baseline goals that they need to um, really control costs and really become a competitive differentiator overall within their hospital systems. Increasingly healthcare systems are facing the challenges of, of cost constraints. Reimbursement is, is less. There's a lot of lot more unpredict unpredictability around how much reimbursement will be for the clinical services being offered. That directly impacts a healthcare system's willingness to resource education. And we, so, so our challenge now in, in 2019 is going to be developing highly cost efficient um, ways of delivering meaningful education to health systems. That means virtualizing and automating as much as possible. So what I see coming in, in healthcare especially is um, more individualized learning. And you know, we've seen a lot of push from the, the new generation of folks that are coming through, um, you know, folks that sort of grew up on smartphones, that they, they want content to come to them. You know, they want to be able to do things on their own schedule. You know, these are the people that, I don't want to go to a bank anymore, I want to bank on my, home, or on my phone from the, the comfort of my own home from my bed. And you know, these are people that tend to have very busy lives, tend to be all over the place, and so they need things that fit into their schedule. They need things that work for them. And in talking to a lot of the nurses, so we've talked to the nurses of Aya, and we've talked to nurses at various different hospitals, um, and they've they've told us again and again, you know, I'm just, I'm so busy. That's, that's my problem. I need the learning to come to me. I need the learning to work for me. And so, what I see specifically to allow that individualized learning are things like VR. Um, one of the things that we've seen is a lot of clinical education takes place in groups. It takes place in large groups and a lot of the reason for that is cost because you have to bring in a specialized instructor for instance and so you have to schedule everyone in advance and you have to get them all in at the same time or you've got to use a specialized piece of equipment and you know same thing applies. You can't do these things ad hoc. And what that doesn't allow learners to do is to practice things that they individually struggle with. You know, you always have to either teach to the lowest common denominator or try and teach to the average, and some people are going to fall behind. And with individualized learning, everyone can focus on the things that are important to them. They can focus on the things that they're struggling with. They can focus on the things that they're really passionate about. And when you have something like VR, or you have something like AR, or you have increases in tablet-based learning, that then allows people to do it not only on their own time, but to do things as many times as they want to without having to feel like they're being judged or other people are watching them. And so it really brings a new type of education, a more sort of self-directed education that I think is very exciting. So 2019, I really see um, 
virtual reality and augmented reality becoming a really important modality within clinical education. And the reason is we're missing a tool set within the clinical education bag of tricks. And it really is how do we scale experience-based interactive learning to up to 10 to 20,000 learners, which is really the dilemma that we're facing. And today we've got kind of three tools that are kind of in our bag of tricks, and it's classroom-based training, which is great. You can bring 20, 30 people into a room and teach them all you want, right? Um, we've also got e-learning, which is a fantastic way to be able to scale education out to 15, 20,000 people because they simply take a course online. And we have medical simulation, which is great to be able to bring people into. Um, but they all have interesting limitations around how we can really address an entire learner population. And the, that combination of tools really doesn't allow us to very broadly expand experience-based training to 10 to 20,000 people, right? E-learning doesn't allow for that as a modality. It's just really about knowledge transfer. While medical simulation out simulation centers is fantastic, it's still limited to the walls of the sim center. So to be able to scale thousands and thousands of people through that can be a challenge. And what AR and VR does is it gives us a much more portable way to be able to expend certain types of experience-based training out to a really large mass of people. And that modality kind of rounds out the tools we need to be able to address the large number of learners that we have. And I think that's really gonna be one of the big changes we see in 2019. I predict that we're going to see an increasing reliance on cloud-based solutions. Providers and educators increasingly are connected and are going to be relying on cloud-based solutions to disseminate best practices in education. I think one of the interesting things that we're seeing is um, we've seen another technology as well. Smartphones are a really good example of this. Um, before the iPhone came out, you know, Microsoft and Nokia were kind of leading that space. Um, they had smartphone devices. They were mostly business-centric. Um, when Apple came out with the iPhone um, in 2008, one of the big shifts that we saw was moving away from these devices that were specifically targeting a demographic and now having a device that's pl platform-based, right? The App Store was a new idea. If you got a mobile phone from Windows or Nokia, it came with the apps that came with it, and that's all you got. Um, now there's a device that could do any number of things based on the software that we put on it. We're kind of now seeing that with education and VR specifically. Um, you know, currently in, in the world right now, if you want to get a VR title, you have to go buy that particular title, and you have to have a platform that supports that title. You don't have a single platform base that all that content can come to you on. So what we're you know, being able to do, I think in 2019, we're going to start seeing um, that growth in is being able to say, here's a platform that you can adopt and the stuff, the titles and the content will come to you. We'll be able to open it up to third party developers. Um, they can develop different types of learning objectives. Um, hopefully, I think the, the pie in the sky goal, which is probably not 2019, but a little bit further out, is being able to bring that content development to the clinical educators themselves. So right now in, in education for clinical, most of the content in those hospitals are actually created in-house. In so they probably create somewhere around 80% of those e-learning objectives. Um, if we could do something like that for virtual reality, um, that would be a huge game changer. Because now instead of you having to chase titles, uh, you can focus really clearly on what are the objectives that I need to create for my, my staff. And now I can create that and put it on a platform and make that available to my entire health organization. We're now moving more towards mobile hardware. So these headsets are becoming more like phones. And that really enables us to do a lot of things that we weren't able to do before. That enables us to very quickly set these VR experiences up and to do it more cheaply so that we can get headsets out, maybe even to individual people. Rather than going to a station, we're just going to send one home with you. And whenever you want to do your training, you can do it on your own schedule.